previous video was very useful to you. Now I am going to talk about the amperometric biosensors. So here now we will see how biosensors work based on amperometric concept or amperometric titration. Amperometric biosensors. <coughs> See, it is based on a amperometric titration. It requires a two electro simple electrochemical setup having two beakers. <coughs> In one beaker there is a platinum working electrode. In another beaker there will be platinum platinum working electrode and platinum reference electrode. And it is filled with uh, AgCl silver chloride and Working electrode beaker is filled with KCL. Also, there is a magnetic stirrer, magnetic pellet, magnetic pellet to maintain homogeneity in the solution. There will be a pipette. This pipette is filled with H2O2. <coughs> H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide, and the wiring will be like this. Platinum so connected to a battery, negative terminal, positive terminal, and an ammeter to read. Uh, so the wiring will be like this. It is connected to the platinum working. There is a salt bridge salt bridge The purpose of the salt bridge is to maintain steady potential between the solutions in the two beakers. Actually salt bridge is made up of filled with uh, uh, gel electrolyte. Okay, So it maintains steady potential while current varies. That current variation is based on how much quantity of uh, hydrogen peroxide is drop is added. So in the beginning when hydrogen peroxide is not added to the solution, current in the ammeter shows zero. It will be zero value. Okay. Once a drop of H2O2 is added, that is titration takes place. Here H2O2 is a titrant. Once the H2O3 is added, oxidation reduction reaction takes place at the working electrode and electrons are generated and electrons pass through it and your ammeter will show a deflection. This deflection is an indication of some micrometer, microampere or milliampere 
point of your amount of current is passing through the circuit. The same time, voltage is maintained steadily. So that is what amperometer. So what reaction takes place at the working electrode? That is H2O2 is drop by is added and PT in a working electrode. Redox reaction takes place. So hydrogen peroxide is oxidized. Oxidized two H plus two protons plus two electrons plus oxygen. Oxygen is involved. So this one molecule of H2O2 produces two numbers of electrons and when these two numbers of electrons passes through it, the micrometer quantity of current flows in the circuit. It is an, for understanding, okay? So one, in one drop, there may be some billions of H2O2 molecules and that much, of, uh, that much of current will pass through. So you will get some milliampere current or microampere current in that amp ampere ammeter reading okay so what is the use of this uh, titration technique and prometric titration procedure in biosensor that is the main question here you are able to know from current you are able to know the quantity of H2O it is a direct way of measuring how much H2O2 is dropped by as added based on the variation of current. Okay. So this, this is the main thing. So so what is H, what is H2O2? What is the role of H2O2 in biosensor? Actually, uh, nowadays we are, we are all having uh, some glucometer or glucose biosensor, and this glucose biosensor uh, this is based on nanotechnology, but this is a conventional setup. In this conventional amperometric titration method, in order to know how much uh, glucose sample, glucose concentration, not no glucose concentration in the blood sample, what we have to do is, uh, we traditionally, um, when glucose, blood in, uh, glucose in the blood reacted with uh, glucose oxidase enzyme, H2O2 is produced as a byproduct. So when blood uh, uh, glucose in the blood sample reacts with glucose oxidase enzyme, H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide byproduct is produced. This hydrogen peroxide, we just assume that we have collected the hydrogen peroxide byproduct and used it in this titration experiment. Okay? Just for your understanding, it is a traditional way of uh, measuring the concentration of, uh, indirectly measuring the concentration of uh, super glucose concentration in the blood. Okay, so by, by allowing the reaction between blood sample and the glucose oxidase enzyme, H2O2 byproduct is produced and collect H2O2 byproduct and use it in a pipette. Okay, so you, how the, uh, by knowing the quantity, how much quantity of current is produced, now this how much quantity of current, current is produced is directly proportional to the quantity of H2O2 as well as quantity of glucose in the blood sample. Okay, so I'm going to <clears throat> you just allow blood sample to react with the glucose oxidase glucose oxidase enzyme and in this reaction 
one byproduct is H2O. We just is a, assume that you have collected H2O2 and used in the pipette. Now you are experimenting and calculating variation of current for the given quantity of H2O2. Now the value of current will tell you how much concentration of glucose in blood. There is glucose in blood actually reacted with the glucose oxidase enzyme and it produced H2O2. Okay. So it is the glucose in blood only reacted with glucose oxidase enzyme and reacted and used byproduct H2O2. And now you have used this H2O2 for the in, in an amperometric titration experiment and current is produced proportional to H2O2. Now this current will give indirectly information about the concentration of glucose. Okay, so this is how um, electrochemical based uh, traditional setup that is using an amperometric uh, titration concept is used to know the concentration of glucose in blood sample. It is a traditional way and it is a complicated, it requires a complicated setup. But nowadays we can able to simplify the setup, uh, that is uh, we can use it by using a nanotechnology, we can uh, simplify this experimental setup, okay, in a compact size. As a result of it, nowadays we are using nanotechnology based glucose sensor. Okay. So it is a complicated process, traditional or conventional setup is a complicated procedure for the to measure the, to know the concentration of glucose. Okay. So this is all about the amperometric biosensor based on amperometric titration. So now we will move on to our next topic, potentiometric biosensor in the next video, good luck.